Hello and welcome back to another video. This one will be about pneumothorax and specifically the clinically high yield points to do with pneumothorax. When it comes to the tension pneumothorax type, that can actually be a pulmonary emergency. So it's very important to be aware of pneumothorax as a complication of um, as actually a ca caused by some of the more common lung diseases as well. So let's look at pneumothorax. Pneumo means air or the presence of gas and thorax is just the chest cavity isn't it so when you have presence of air or gas in the thorax okay that makes sense to you but actually um, pneumothorax is the presence of air in the pleural space so if these are our lungs over here you can see that uh, just kind of uh, en enveloping the lung uh, between the visceral and parietal kind of space is the pleural space here. And usually there should be no air here. But um, in case of a pneumothorax, you have air or fluid, feel, well, air in the pleural space. If, it's, uh, if it progresses to fluid, we know that that is known as a pleural effusion as well. Now we're going to be looking at the clinically relevant signs and perhaps in a future video I will compare more in detail spontaneous versus tension but let's try and clarify it here as well. So what can cause a what can cause a pneumothorax? Well one of the most common causes is trauma actually. So a stab wound or just any sort of blunt trauma directly to the chest or even a which could even cause then a rib fracture in that case that will basically you are poking a hole into the chest cavity and somehow allowing this air to enter the pleural space okay so stab wounds um, trauma anything like that can cause a pneumothorax and remember pneumothorax is air entering into the pleural space and it is commonly caused by a rib fracture as well um, and there's also something called a spontaneous pneumothorax um, in case of a spontaneous pneumothorax a primary primary spontaneous pneumothorax would be in the case of um, unknown cause okay but uh, these are some typical causes of a um, spontaneous pneumothorax. And so when it's not traumatic, it's spontaneous. OK, when it's not traumatic, it's spontaneous. And this can be caused by rupture of subpleural blebs or bullae. So remember these little protrusions. Um, it's common in patients with a collagen synthesis defect, such as Marfan syndrome. Um, if you remember about Marfan syndrome, this was a... Um, this was a uh, connective tissue disorder and it was characterized by this um, long, tall, tall man with long limbs. Remember, tall man with long limbs and he had um, a little bit of a pectus excavatum, uh, which was the, yeah, which was the curved shaped chest outwardly protruding. There was also ectopia lentis and there were also common um, common chances for mitral valve prolapse as well. So remember Marfan syndrome already predisposed to a lot of other symptoms, but now it also predisposes to a pneumothorax, okay? COPD, you'd be surprised. COPD does actually, um, is a kind of like a big causing agent for pneumothorax. So is asthma. So is TB, pneumonia, lung abscess and cystic fibrosis. And smoking is, in fact, a risk factor for pneumothorax. OK, now there's difference in presentation. There's difference in presentation of tension pneumothorax versus the rest. And most commonly traumatic causes attention pneumothorax. Traumatic um, wound would cause attention pneumothorax and it will make sense to you once I explain. So when it comes to a tension pneumothorax, what is it? Well, imagine that there is a open wound. Um, there is an open wound and our lungs are suddenly, there's, there's an open wound due to any kind of trauma and suddenly all this air is coming in to the pleural space and here into the pleural cavity and in this pleural space. So 
tension pneumothorax is a one-way valve system. And in the cases of a one-way valve, it's the air is coming in and coming in most likely due to a um, trauma. The air will continue coming in, but there is no way, no way out for the air. So it's not like the air will go back up the trachea, um, back up the lungs, back up the bronchi, uh, back up the trachea and exhaled. No, the air will just continue building and building and building. And as the air continues to build, this will cause a tension pneumothorax. In the case of a tension pneumothorax, remember it is a one-way valve system. It is a um, pulmonary emergency. And when we have so much air building up and we will have um, deviation of the other mediastinal structures as well as the trachea, okay? Imagine if you've got so much air just building up in one area, that will push the trachea, so if it's in the, the one lung, right, that will push the trachea contralaterally, so away, because there's so much um, positive pressure. Remember, in this case, in the case of a tension pneumothorax, it actually gets positive pressure. And that's what then compresses the um, kind of pushes the trachea away and also compresses the mediastinum, compresses the great veins and compresses the heart eventually. OK, so there's a couple of signs and symptoms, important signs and symptoms of tension pneumothorax. You have to be aware of sudden onset breathlessness, sudden onset dyspnea and pleuritic chest pain, which is chest pain on inspiration. So when the patient inspires, they will feel a lot of pain. And then when they let go, it's not as painful. Tachypnea as well. So what are the clinical, clinically relevant, uh, high yield points that you need to know? The patient will be undergoing hypotension. Remember, cardiac filling is impaired because you are now getting compression of the great veins. And when you get compression of the great veins, um, cardiac filling is impaired because, you know, the pressure is building up so much, pressing onto the mediastinum, onto the heart. And you will actually get a also a decrease in preload as well, if you want to get technical about that. Also, when you have this, firstly, when you have this positive pressure all of the blood that's in the peripheries or in your uh, yeah in your peripheral areas will just kind of pull up and we need this negative intrathoracic pressure in order to um, mediate negative intrathoracic pressure in order to mediate a lot of the functions and we will get in distended neck veins and these distended neck veins will be characterized by a raised raised JVP. Okay, so this these are the classic signs. Of course, you'll get the shift of the trachea away from the side of the pneumothorax. Now, this is interesting, and I will do a video comparing spontaneous versus uh, tension. But remember, these are all symptoms or signs of tension pneumothorax away from the side of the pneumothorax. Of course, you will get decreased breath sound on the affected side um, because of all of the pressure that is building up and uh, you're not actually remember tension pneumothorax one way valve you are literally taking the air in and in and in and that kind of like imagine there's a valve that's just opening allowing for the air to come in but not letting the air go back out hyper resonance to percussion on side of pneumothorax that makes sense wherever there's more air there's going to be hyper resonant percussion sound now um so remember it's tension pneumothorax if there is most importantly, hypotension, distended neck veins, and a tracheal shift. Reduce the signs you can look out for in a patient are reduced chest expansion, hyper resonance, as I mentioned, absence breath sounds, as I mentioned, and tracheal shift. In these patients with suspected pneumothorax, we do not, at first instance, we do not go for a chest X ray because it's already too late. It's literally already too late. We need to immediately um, get that air out of the pleural cavity of the pleural space. And we will do an emergency needle decompression. Emergency needle decompression. Remember, we are not awaiting a chest x-ray in the case of a tension pneumothorax. 
and long-term solutions could make, mean a chest drain, okay? Um, and I think lastly, we're just going to look at a x-ray just to, an x-ray just to wrap this up. Here you can see, um, here you can see a blackened lung because of a lot of air as well. And here you can see the trachea, which usually lies, you know, straight, kind of medial. Here it's being deviated and it's being deviated away from the side of the tension pneumothorax. This is the tension pneumothorax and the trachea is being deviated or shifted, trachea shift, contralaterally. Okay, hope that was helpful. Please subscribe for more videos and give this video a like if you enjoyed.